Hi, I'm Sam. We're here at Shaper HQ. Here is Shaper Origin, and we'll be answering questions for the Core 77 readers. So one of Origin's key features, its portability, means that it's going to be exposed to much more dynamic environments uh, than a regular gantry CNC machine. So to align elements to the, that environment, we've had to be a little bit cunning. So here we've got a, a panel of uh, poplar and end grain, which means we wouldn't be able to fit it in a conventional CNC machine. So we're trying to align our cuts to this. We've got it aligned uh, at 90 degrees to us. And what we're going to do is use the bit itself to probe the edges and uh, define a line, which will be our x-axis. So I'm going to plunge down here a full uh, rotation of the cutting flute so that we get an uh, accurate circular reading about how far off center we are from that. So we're going to use the top of the flute to just push it just against the surface and uh, not, not applying any pressure, just, just touching, and then uh, probe that. So then I can move along to the right and probe again. And that's defined my x-axis. Now I can move to the side and probe once. And we're making an assumption that we've got a 90 degree corner there. So now it's uh, retracting, getting out of the way. And we see we have a grid we can work from. So we're going to use uh, one of the dev tools, this box joint feature. And uh, we're just going to enter the data about the size of our piece of poplar. So 0.77 inches wide, 3.5 inches long, and we'll make five. So when we go create joint, we've got this elements popped up. Now you'll see as I move around, it starts to behave a lot differently to what you've seen in the past. Uh, you'll see it's snapping to uh, 0.8 inch increments. So uh, that enables us to align things very nicely. So now we're confidently aligned to zero, zero. And you'll notice as I rotate, uh, we're not, it's not rotating with the tool. It's now uh, locked into the uh, rotation of the, of the probed x, y axis. So. Uh, Clicking there, we now can confidently say we're aligned in this corner at zero, zero. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this out, and we'll show you the results. OK, so we're going to go in and cut this now. Uh, I'm just going to do a quarter inch depth uh, cut, and we'll see how this works out. So this feature is powerful in that we have created a box uh, joint of arbitrary size that's uh, totally adapted to the to the uh, the panel we have uh, with probed, and we can do that without ever touching a computer. So we don't have uh, we don't have patterns we've got to store that we have to uh, find and are only appropriate for specific sized uh, elements. This one is completely uh, parametric, so without leaving the tool, we can define everything and uh, cut it out exactly to spec uh, in the field without um, needing to dig around and find any other, any other elements. We can make our little fixture and totally produce this uh, anytime in any, in any format we like. So we don't have any uh, sacrificial backing elements, but you can see basically we have an entirely workable finger joint ready to go. In this demo, we're going to look at uh, touch off, which is when we use the tip of the bit uh, moving down and touching the surface of our material. So you'll see it dropping down there. This is exaggerated. It would usually be very close to the surface and just ever so slightly touches the surface, just enough to make a change in that, that pressure reading. And that gives us z equals zero. We've been asked by the readers of Core 77 how many unicorns it takes to assemble a shaper origin. Let's take a look. Four. Four unicorns. Hey, this is Noah at Shaper HQ. Uh, so I wanted to show you today the, uh, the knot fill uh, that was featured in our launch video. And we agree, uh, it was a little bit confusing uh, because we had to edit it down. You didn't get to see 
making the positive part of it, which um, we want to show you today. So I'm going to start by just grabbing uh, the file and placing it down. Um, so it's placed. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set an offset of a 1 16th. And what that's going to do is it lets me take sort of a, what we call a roughing pass all the way around. Uh, it's a pass where I kind of don't care uh, about the uh, cut quality quite so much. Um, and I'm going to come around a second time and do a finishing pass, uh, removing only that 16th of material all the way around, around the edge. And, and that makes it uh, a really clean, nice edge uh, so that it fits nicely into the negative we'll cut later on. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. OK, so we're going to go ahead and uh, do this first pass around. Like I said, it's a, a, an offset of 1 16th of an inch uh, outside of the line. So I'm just going to go around quickly and get sort of the, the large amount of work done where the, the bits all the way engage in the material. Um, and see, that goes pretty quickly around. That's complete. Okay. Okay, so now that I've done that roughing pass, I'm going to set my bit offset to zero. And that means right on the dimension that I, uh, that, that I drew. Uh, and go ahead and go around it one more time. So like I said for this, uh, we're just removing a tiny bit of material going around the edge. And that means that the, the tool is less engaged um, and the spindle speed can stay up faster. And just in general, it, the, the, the net effect of all of that is that you get a much, much nicer, cleaner edge than you would on a fully engaged cut. Uh, and you can see that goes pretty quickly. OK, so that's the uh, positive part, the plug cut. Just pop that out. Uh, we use double stick tape on this guy just so that it makes it easy to do that finishing pass that I was doing. Um, so there's the plug. OK, so this is the second part um, of cutting the wood fill. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go grab the same file uh, that I was using to cut the positive. And this is actually the really powerful part uh, of, of doing this kind of work with Origin, uh, is that I'm using the same file. I didn't have to go and make a different file with different tool paths. I just place the same file down, um, and I go to this setting that says Path Type. And I select pocket. So the first operation that we're going to do is uh, is sort of hog out the interior of this pocket, remove all that material. And uh, Origin does that in sort of a freeform manner. So you just sort of color in uh, the opening. And it won't let you go outside the boundaries, but um, you just sort of remove the material as you please. Uh, so this is really cool, not only for doing this knot fill kind of stuff, but for inlay work and, and a number of other things. Um, this this ability to change uh, the, the path type on the fly uh, is, is really great. So I'm going to go ahead and pocket this out. And then we'll set the path type to outside. And I will do um, a couple of passes to get this pocket to the right dimension for that plug to just fit right in. Here we go. Pocketing with Origin is uh, very free form. Uh, you move in the interior of the pocket uh, and, and fill that in. And you can see that it tracks where you've been. So you're kind of just like coloring that area in. And, uh, and when you get up to an edge or a boundary, uh, it, it doesn't let you leave the boundary. So it, it, it keeps you from, from making a mistake at the edges. And you can choose what to do in the interior.
this is really cool because often plunge routers are used uh, in this way to to open up a pocket in uh, in something for doing inlay work, and uh, it means that you kind of have to either draw on uh, on your work and try and stay within pencil lines, or or build a template to stay within the template. And this is just uh, sort of just like using a plunge router, except that you can't really go outside of of the edges uh, without without it retracting and Uh, just going around the edge of this first pass, uh, you can see that after I did the pocketing, it leaves kind of a, a rough edge, and so that edge is offset actually in the pocketing. I'm just using using the uh, new path type to clean up the edge, and now we'll start sneaking up on that dimension to get the plug to fit. Okay, so I've cut uh, the pocket and the inside path, uh, and I'm going to test fit the plug. So uh, just looking to see whether or not we need to take a little bit more off, and uh, if we do, that's okay, because we have that bit offset functionality that will let us sort of sneak up on the dimension, and dimension relatively. So uh, yeah, it looks like I need to go and, and take a little bit more material off, so let's give that a try. So right now we're actually removing very little material um, and, and the goal here is just, I, I don't want to make the pocket too big, um, I want to make it sort of just right to fit that plug. So I'm going to keep sort of uh, guessing on the offset and checking to see if the plug fits. Look at that, nice snug press fit. So uh, we had a lot of questions about our tape and we just wanted to address them. So one of them was, does it leave residue on the work surface? So yeah, here it is, just lifting it off. Um, we did a lot of work with the tape manufacturers to find something that's on there sturdy enough. So when you move it around, it doesn't move or scrape, but then you can remove it easily without leaving any residue on the surface. In this demonstration, we're gonna look at what happens when the tool can no longer find its way, when dust starts to occlude its cutting path. So Maddie's just going to blow dust in front of us, and we're going to try and keep cutting. So we'll just start here. Everything's fine so far. So it's pretty simple. It just retracts when it can't see enough markers to get a good track. We thought it would be fun for you guys to see the prototypes of what we've been developing along the way for dust extraction. Here's many of the various things we've tried out, and we'll show you our latest version of dust extraction. So here we're going to put a shield on that helps divert the airflow out the dust port. So here we'll show you a cut. So as you can see, all the air is porting down and then shooting right out the dust port. And there's very little to no dust being left on top of your work surface.
In this demo, we're going to look at the speed the Z axis retracts the bit to uh, prevent damaging your workpiece if anything goes wrong, if you drift too far from a curve or we lose track of markers. So I'm clicking the button. Beautiful. We've seen the Z axis retract quickly out of the way, and uh, so that's its mechanical abilities. Now we're going to look at how that influences our cutting quality. So this circle we see on screen is our uh, corrective range. So that's the area the tool can move to compensate for our motion. As it reaches the limit of this, we'll see it become a dotted line as it crosses over. Uh, it can no longer uh, track that line as it's, it's beyond its corrective range. So it will try to retract as quickly as possible and get out of the way. Now, at the moment, in its current form, it does that at the very limit of the tool. We can obviously add software smarts to uh, make it predict that we're accelerating towards an edge faster than we can retract. So in this example, we'll just look at it in its raw state and uh, see how quickly it gets out of the way. So I'm going to cut this line. Uh, you'll see um, half an inch of corrective motion is more than enough for me to keep the tool on this line and move quite rapidly. So I'm going to move along this line cutting and then I'm going to intentionally move to the side and see how quickly the tool gets out of the way and what impact that has on our cut. Then I'm just going to go back and continue the cut and we'll zoom in and review that. So I'll set that up now. So you'll see we have a clean cut running most of the way along here, and then where we went beyond the range at a modest rate, the tool uh, retracted as quickly as it could and left this little neck. Thank you for your questions and queries. Uh, I hope those videos helped uh, communicate what uh, Origin is currently capable of. We'll be uh, continuing to improve its performance, its feature set, and uh, the user experience in the coming months. Uh, if you want to keep up to date with that, uh, sign into our website, shapertools.com, and uh, down the bottom there's a little subscribe button. Uh, if not, there's just keep going back to the features section where we'll continue to update uh, as new features are made available. Thanks.